Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about Japan because Japan is restarting a nuclear power plant and they have a new prime minister. So what, we can, what can we learn from this news? First, the new Japanese prime minister vows to promote nuclear power in his first policy speech and the Okinawa nuclear power plant gets the green light to restart. Now why is this relevant? Uh, the Okinawa nuclear power plant consists of three boiling water reactors. The three boiling water reactors are of the same type as the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant boiling water reactors. So the trouble here is that uh, the Japanese, they are obviously trepidatious about restarting a boiling water reactor because of what has, what has transpired in Fukushima. So what they have done is they've created new standards for these reactors. They basically say, listen, uh, you can restart as long as you meet these requirements. And these re requirements, they, they range up from uh, enhanced uh, earthquake resistance, flood resistance, but also, uh, you know, having very strict rules about your uh, backup generators, your backup batteries, uh, all that stuff that you need to cool your reactor whenever there's an accident. And what's further, uh, furthermore, what is interesting is that the Okinawa nuclear power plant was closest to the epicenter of the Tohoku earthquake. Now, the new prime minister, his name is Shigeru Ishiba. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any quotes because it's all in Japanese. And uh, I mean, Google Translate, it, it, it sends you into the woods some, sometimes. So this is what I could found, uh, find about his views about nuclear energy. Ishiba will advocate for the use of nuclear power to enhance the resource poor country's energy self-sufficiency. Continuing the previous government's stance of maximizing nuclear power and renewable energy to promote decarbonization. Now what I do in these videos, some of you who don't know, is I make these maps and I make sure that I get as many of the power plants that are uh, present in a country in order to give you an overview of what the energy landscape of a country looks like. Now what you see here is all these place markers. I have yellow place markers for gas plants, red place markers for oil and coal plants and biomass, and blue place markers for nuclear power plants. Now the first thing that you may note is that Japan is a pretty mountainous island, which means that they have a lot of natural harvest Harbors, which subsequently means, means that practically all of their energy infrastructure is built on the shore in these natural harbors. The Okinawa nuclear power plant is no different. So the Okinawa nuclear power plant, as you can see, it's situated in the northern part of the main island and it's built on a peninsula. Now, what you see here are three nuclear reactors. You have one two and three. Now, I don't know if these are actually units one, two, and three, as I have highlighted them, uh, but this is this is pretty interesting because these things look atypical for people who don't know nuclear as well as uh, the average viewer of this, uh, of this channel does. So normally when you see a nuclear power plant, what you expect is a, a round dome or a cylindrical shape or some sort. But boiling water reactors generally don't have that. They have a large squarish uh, reactor building and then they have uh, what every other uh, power plant has, which is a generator building, which is a long, which is a stretched building uh, that is longer than the rest. Now, what, which, which one of these uh, three units exactly has been restarted on the 29th? I don't know. But what is that, that, that's, not, that's not so interesting at this point. What I want to talk about is basically the rest of the infrastructure, because you can see there are co considerable amount of nuclear power reactors uh, distributed alongside the, the, the Japanese shore. But what's also interesting, and this is, uh, this is the natural harbor aspect that I want to highlight, if we go to Nagoya, and this is, by the way, very interesting because uh, Japan, Japan is a very populous country as well. They, these, are, these are mega cities, cities that house, you know, uh, millions of people. Not, not just millions of people, some of these tens of millions of people. And then we get Nagoya. Nagoya is one of the largest, is, I believe it's the second largest city in, in Japan. And what you see is this is this natural harbor. 
Here is the city center. So this is the first natural harbor that they started to use, and then they started expanding outward. What you can see is that all of these, uh, the, this is an artificial uh, island, as you can see in these as well. Uh, all the heavy industry is concentrated here. This is this is petro, petrochemical, uh, petrochemical and energy, uh, petrochemical. There's also some 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 raw materials here, and some some cars and other stuff. Again, a thermal power power station this one is uh, natural gas um, quite a considerable amount of boilers uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen boilers in these two buildings and then another two boilers over here uh, some of these are have mixed uh, mixed input so I believe that this one is natural gas liquefied natural gas and maybe this one uses oil or also natural gas I, th I think it's also natural gas then there's steel industry you can almost always find steel industry near these uh, huge uh, huge towns uh, steel industry is quite easy to find it's black and red on these satellite pictures black because of the uh, the coal that is needed and red because of the the iron ore and some white because of the limestone because limestone is also an integral part of steel making now each of these huge steel manufacturing facilities has one or multiple power plants on board and mostly these power plants run on sin fuel which is something that you get after you have produced uh, your steel you need a lot of carbon you get a lot of carbon monoxide and you get a lot a lot, a lot of uh, you can you can also add hydrogen to the mix and that's when you have sin fuel now what i want to show you here is 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 uh, two coal plants this one over here is not so obvious but this one is first we go to the obvious one you see this 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 black uh, spot on this uh, on this map these are actually just rows of coal and these rows of coal as you can see they have conveyor belts and cranes units and, and such so what happens is the coal gets scooped off of this this coal heap and that gets transported over these conveyor belts these conveyor belts run all the way up to the boiler and the boilers are over here they have five boilers in this particular coal plant uh, the boiler basically is surrounded by water pipes these water pipes heat the water that's inside up that then turns into steam to make superheated steam out of it or super critical steam and, and that's what increases the power uh, efficiency of these coal plants uh, all this stuff that you see uh, that is over here that's all meant to filter out the worst of the pollutants of these coal plants it's not clean coal still not isn't clean coal but it's it's better than it used to be now this one is not that obvious because you don't see the coal uh, lying underneath the stars you can see this long uh, squarish building this gray building but you can see the conveyor belts coming out of here and they move into the boiler room over here so this is this is basically uh the bread and butter of any self-respecting energy system that has to power uh, an industry and a population that's at the scale that it is in japan also very interesting uh, a bit of information about Japan is that they have a lot of steel mills, not just steel mills as you, as you saw just now, steel, um, steel production facilities, but they also have a ton of paper mills absolutely stunning there is one uh, other nuclear power plant that I want to highlight uh, these reactors are currently not operational these are also boiling water reactors this is the uh this is the let me see if i can find it the kashiwazaki karira nuclear power plant that's right uh, these nuclear power plants are among the fastest builds ever so if somebody says nuclear takes too long to build you should point them at these nuclear power plants over here each one of these was built i believe i believe that the fastest was built in 3.9 years we can build nuclear power plants in, in less than four years if we absolutely want to. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't look like we want to at this moment. Oh, this is, this is obvious. Uh, we have to look at Fukushima Daiichi, right? This is the, uh, the fate, this, this is, this is the plant that we all want to forget, but, uh, 
it is better to, to learn from this plant and to make sure that the lessons learned can turn into better nuclear power plants, uh, not safer nuclear power plants, because I believe that even this one was a, a, was really safe. Um, it didn't cause any uh, any any mortalities uh, from radioactive uh, fallout. But the tsunami that 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 washed away twenty thousand lives uh, gets gets forgotten. This is a financial disaster. That's what it is, and, and this is what I mean by better better nuclear power plants in the future. You want nuclear power plants not to turn into financial disasters. So, uh, the elephant in the room I just showed you, um, the Fukushima Daiichi power plant, the Great East Japan earthquake, I also call it the Tohoku earthquake, uh, it caused a tsunami, this tsunami claimed 20,000 lives, 2,500 people or 2,500 souls still have not been found. Uh, more than a million homes and buildings are were partially or completely destroyed by the tsunami. Then we have the meltdown, which is pr predominantly a financial catastrophe, which is one that we want to avoid in the future, but it was not Armageddon, as some people believe. Now still, despite the knowledge that we have today, 110,000 people were evacuated from the vicinity because they were afraid of the nuclear fallout. And this has caused all, you know, the elderly, the sick and the weak uh, to die from stress. Uh, and this is, this is the real tragedy of the Fukushima Daiichi disaster, was that the people who were evacuated needlessly, they died. And, and that's despite the fact that we all know how to handle iodine remediation. We know that we have to stay indoors. We know that we have to keep the, the doors and windows shut. And we all know that we don't get to eat the strawberry from the strawberry tree for the next uh, months, couple of months. The worst fallout, apart from the couple of thousand uh, people who, uh, who transpired, was the worldwide panic that was caused by the Fukushima Daiichi uh, accident, especially the anti-nuclear hysteria and the air pollution increase. And that's the untold damage from the Fukushima panic. So Japan stopped using nuclear, not completely. There was one point in time when they didn't have any nuclear reactors online anymore, but they started restarting them quite quickly afterwards. But they did start using considerably more fuels. We have to understand that at that point, nuclear was about 15% of the, or maybe even 20% of all the electricity that was being produced in Japan. So we're talking about 2011. Now, unfortunately, I can't get any, any good figures. Otherwise, I would have made some interesting graphs for us to see. Uh, but also interesting or also important when we are talking about this is Germany. Germany at the time was mulling over the stopping the nuclear exit. They wanted to stop the nuclear exit, keep the nuclear power plants online that they had, and perhaps even start building new ones in the future. Angela Merkel's party... I believe she was CDU, uh, they were having an election in Baden-Württemberg, which is a state in Germany. And her party was about to lose this election. So she had to, she had to make a decision, a landmark decision that would be that would potentially save you know the CDU fraction in, in Baden-Württemberg. So she said, listen, uh, the nuclear accident that happened at Fukushima Daiichi happened to the Japanese. We thought that the Japanese were technologically so advanced that they could basically avoid these kind of disasters. But now it has happened, which means that, you know, even if it happens to them, it can happen to us. So we are going to get out of nuclear completely. And as a consequence, what they did was they started using more coal. And this has led to a lot of premature deaths. So first we're going to look at the energy situation from of, or the electricity situation from Japan. This is the best graph that I could find. I, I would have liked to make my own one. This runs up to 2022. What you see in 20, 2011, 
you see a precipitous drop of nuclear uh Nucle let me let me get my face out of the way because I'm in front of the legend. Yellow is nuclear, blue is hydro, green is renewables, and then we get the browns, natural gas, coal, and petroleum. So hydro has always been relatively steady. Nuclear did about 10, 50, maybe even 20% of all the electricity in Japan, and the rest was basically fossil fuels. So when the Fukushima Daiichi accident happened, what they needed to do was they needed to burn more fossil fuels in order to make sure that the economy kept going. They burned more petroleum, they burned more coal, and they burned more natural gas. It's unfortunately that I can't get the figures for this, otherwise I would have shown you. They also started building new renewables, more renewables, and they started restarting nuclear power plants after a while. So what we see here is basically what happens when you get freaked out by nuclear. This is even worse. So this is something that I made myself. I made this in, I believe it was 2020. This is based on the on, on a paper that was that was published at Columbia University by Karacha and Sato. And basically what they've done is they calculated how many people have died prematurely because of the added coal uh, emissions now i have gone back as far as i could back to 2007 i wanted to go back to 2001 when germany decided to get out of the nuclear and to do the nuclear exit this is what uh what gerhard schroeder decided to do this was his deal with the greens we get out of nuclear i get to go i get to build more gas plants in germany you get to build some renewables that that was basically the deal so be so Back in 2020 or in 2019, I calculated that the cumulative mortality of this choice was 28,704, going back to 2007. I redid the calculation last year, and I believe that, that we went up to 45,000, but unfortunately, unfortunately, my computer crashed and I lost the data back then. So I really have to do this again one time. And, and, and then make another video to, to show you just what the real consequences of anti-nuclear fear and keeping new, keeping coal running is. Let me put my face back. I was in front of the numbers, but these numbers are not that interesting anyway. The big red number over here, cumulative mortality. That's what's really interesting. Despite all that, Japan is now turning back to nuclear. They're turning back their nuclear power plants. They have set new standards. They are making sure that these reactors meet these new standards. And they're turning them back on. What's also interesting, and this is also a relatively new uh, development, is that they are actually designing new nuclear power plants for deployment in Japan. Mitsubishi, the SRZ 1200, or Toshiba, the IBR 1350, of which you can see this cutaway model uh, that's on the screen right now. This is the Toshiba. It's a 1350 megawatt boiling water reactor with a circular double containment building. This is this is what you see what happens when people get freaked out by a nuclear accident. They start incorporating more security measures, including this circular containment building. This is the situation as we have it today. It's not longer that relevant because uh, Okinawa here, the blue, the blue one over here, has been restarted as we speak. But this was a, a, a picture made or a, a graph made by Nippon. Basically, what they say: the red reactors, those have resumed operation. So it's at uh, Ohi, it's at uh, Takahama, Genkai, Sendai, Ikata, Mihama. Those have resumed operation, Okinawa as well. Then we have the blue ones, meet new standards, Tokai, uh, Kashiwazaki, Kariwa, uh, Shimane, and Takama, Takahama. And if we look at, you know, the figures, the permanently, permanently closed, it's 31 units and 25 gigawatts of closed capacity, you know, capacity that won't come back ever. 14 units have been restarted today, 13.5 gigawatts. Pending restarts is another 5 gigawatts, and uncertain is 11. You know, it's, we're talking about under construction, and especially these these other plants at the Kashiwazaki, Karira, 
a nuclear power plant. I've put this all in a in an Excel sheet for myself to figure out. Let me turn this up. So what we have, uh, Fukushima Daiichi, we have uh, the unit number. Is it operational or not? Has it been closed? And then obviously the, the, the megawatts pending restart onshore and when the, the reactor started. So commercial oper operation. And what you can see here, Genkai, two units restarted to two biggest ones, 1180, Ikata, same, same, same matter, 890 megawatts has been restarted, it's also the newest reactor, the two smaller ones, 566, haven't been restarted, then we have the Kashibazaki Kariwa plant, actually these ones should turn a different color. But in any case, these are still questionable. We don't know what they are doing. And if we tally it all up, we get to this, uh, these figures over here. Where you can see total operational 13,593 megawatts, 14 units. And here 24,969 megawatts, 31 close, spending reset, etc. etc. Now the interesting bit is if you run these as you can, attaining, you know, reaching a capacity factor of let's say 90 percent then these operational nuclear power plants can can produce 107 terawatt hours per year the total chinese uh oh, chinese the total japanese uh energy production back in 2022 was 939 terawatt hours per year if that would be the case then these reactors would be able to produce 11.42% of all the electricity in Japan, which is considerable. It's nothing to sneeze at, especially given the fact that it is a huge industrial country. Then we have the operational plus pending restart plus unsure. If we get all of these restarted, so these, these ones, these ones, then we get up to 234 terawatt hours per year. And that's almost 25% of the total energy electricity production, I must say. It says energy here. It's electricity, electricity production in Japan, which is a sizable figure and well worth pursuing. So what I want to say is I, I want to, I, I really hope that this prime minister, uh, Shigeru Ishiba, is going to do what he says he is going to do, maximize nuclear potential that he's going to restart all these nuclear power plants that can't be restarted that meet their new standards and that they actually get to uh, enjoy the fruits that nuclear power plants offer and with that you have me reached it you made it you reached the end of this video please make sure that you comment down below there's a lot of comments lately uh, i also would like you to see discuss things with each other please if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe leave a like if you like the video if you think that this is worth viewing and if you want to support me make these videos please go to my patreon page and become a member thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you bye bye <coughs>